Greetings all. Your old buddy Pat here. Yep, I broke down and I bought a new plane. I mean, I couldn't help it. For the price and everything, I couldn't help it. <laughs> My weakness. I have two weaknesses. Uh, one is pretty women with long hair and the other one is a good price on an airplane. <laughs> so, I went and broke down and bought myself, uh, as you can see, Dynam F6F Hellcat. And like I said, they had it for a good price. So, I got it. Now, first of all, let's, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do to this first. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, let's talk about detailing. I'm going to detail this baby. Uh, I got my, in fact, I don't even like this paint job that it has. I mean, I like the, the navy paint job, but it's got too much sky blue, not enough dark blue. And plus the tail section is all sky blue. I like my tail sections on my navy planes. I like all my tail sections to be dark blue. It's my preference. So anyway, I got out my old book, uh, Flying Legends. This has got just about every World War II plane in it. All full, full color and black and white from during the period of the war. And planes that are flying presently. So I decided to do some research on the Hellcat, and I'm looking at paint jobs, and sure enough, they got some nice paint jobs in here. This one's similar to what this one is uh, painted up as, as that number 19, and um, let's see, this one, it says here, doesn't say what carrier it was on with this paint job, but it's a... Uh, well, they're both the same, F6, F-3, and dash 5. So, I'm going to enjoy this. Now, I've heard there's been some problems with the uh, landing gears on these Hellcats. These 90 degree retracting landing gears. And I figured, hey, you know what? Let's use my expertise and see what it what it can get me. Because I've, I've, I've heard people say they can't fix it. They end up replacing them. Now, I get, first thing I looked at were these gears. Now, yeah, they got some slop in them, so they'll chatter. When, they, when they're in the air, they will chatter. Now, I had two ideas. The first idea was just to put a piece of foam down there so that when this retracts, the wheel rests against the foam. But it'll sit up a little bit, but it won't chatter. That's the simple, easy way out. Too easy for me. Can't do that. So, I, I've spent about an hour looking these over, and I also uh, cycled them as well, too. Let me show you what I came up with. It's rather interesting what I came up with. These are, these are some interesting landing gears. I'm going to hook up my Turnigy, uh servo tester. We're going to cycle these gears. Let me see. Signal is white. Put that in there correctly. Uh, let's see. It worked yesterday. There we go. Like I said, I've been, I've been looking these, I've been watching these. I've been cycling them, and I've, uh, just, just watching them. And got a little rattle too, a little shaking when it's retract, when it's extended, along with the retract as well. I've been looking at these and looking at them, I say, huh, what could be the problem? So, <coughs> so I noticed one thing, right at the base here, of the gears, it's got like this metal pin coming out like a peg. Now that actually is what activates your rotating. Now, when it's reach, when it's extended, it hits against this mount, and that's what extend. That's what makes it rotate, and it sits forward. Now, when it retracts, it hits against the base of the uh, mount, and it flattens out the gear. Now. What I can see, there's some slop in that. Honestly, after thinking about it, 
Dynam could have put, easily solved the problem by putting a bigger pin in there. That way it would eliminate that slot. Now I'm going to come up with a couple ideas of how I can do that. Let me try something first. Hold one second. Now that I'm thinking about it again, I'm going to try something to see what you guys think. Now all you got to, like I said, they could have put a bigger uh, pin on that, on that. And that would have solved the problem. That's what I see. I'm going to try something real quick. And you guys can tell me what you think. This isn't going to be permanent. This is just a quick brainstorm I had while sitting here talking to you guys. Now I'm taking a piece of electrical tape, and I'm going to fill that little, I'm, make, I'm, make, I'm making that peg just a little wider. Now that did eliminate some of the slop right there. Let's try retracting. And that also eliminated some of the slop. Now what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to find a way of putting like a, a brass tube or something over that pin to enlarge it so that it will take out all that slop. I'm going to do that. Because it seemed to work well right there. Just this little piece of tape. It doesn't get all of it out. I'm just, I just put this piece of tape around that pin just to see how it works. And honestly, it did take some of the slop out. So if I were to put a pin in there, it will take out a lot more slop to the point where there's actually none. So I'm going to experiment with that. Uh, pull that piece of tape off. There we go. And see that? There's all that slop there. And people have been saying that they have no idea how to fix this. And they've been replacing the gear. So I think I may have solved it. And I'm going to go ahead and try that. So I, get some, I got some copper fuel line tubing over there. I'm going to see if I can put some copper tubing over that, over that pen to increase the size of it so that it eliminates the slot when she's sitting in the wing and when it's uh, extended. So that's what I'm going to do. Plus, I'm going into detail, I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to sand off some of these, uh, peg, these, these mold spots here. Now, that kind of looks tacky. I'm also going to cut flaps into this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the, these are two sectional flaps. So I'm going to cut two section flaps off out of them. And I'm going to use the same method I use to do my cow flaps on my P40. To do, to, so that one flap will operate the other inner flap as well too. Real easy. Now this kit is the R, RTF, ready to fly version. It's got all the servos, the motor, the ESC, and like I said, for the price, I couldn't beat it, you know. And it's a pretty good size plane. And like I said, I'm going I'm to put a slightly darker blue on this, because this is kind of light. So I'm going to put a dark, slightly darker blue. I like my, my Hellcat to be dark blue. I'm going to put some nose art on it, too. And... Uh, I already got a battery for it. In fact, the battery out of my bat wing, my soon-to-be flying again bat wing, will be powering this because it's perfect for it. And I'll be using my all-famous Turnigy 9X for this as well because this baby can hold memory for seven planes. So right now, it's only got one, so it went, putting the Hellcat on, I have two. And uh, let's see. Oh, also, now one thing I've been doing, I've been seeing a lot of, which makes a lot of sense. I've been watching Steve from Killer Planes. He does a great job crash proofing those planes. And I was watching him with his Corsair. He had a Dynam Corsair and he, I guess he lost orientation and that baby did like my Corsair and just nosed right in. Because one thing about those Corsairs, even the uh, model Corsairs, the way that nose is made, when you go into a turn, she wants to die. And you got to give it opposite rudder to keep that nose up. And that's when I, when I lost orientation, that's what happened to me. I didn't keep the nose up, and so she dove in. I think that's what happened to you, Steve, when you flew that Corsair. And it, you went around, and she did just like mine, dove in. Didn't give it that op opposite rudder. But 
He uh, dove in nose first, high speed. Almost no damage. He could have repaired. He could have replaced the propeller right there, and flew it again. So that crash proofing really does seem to work. So I am going to crash proof this baby. I mean, it's not hard. I've been watching his videos. He's got some good how-to videos on how to crash proof these bay. How to crash proof them. I'm gonna put carbon rods in here. He also used plastic. I got some plastic, but I think I'm gonna use some of that carbon fiber. Uh, paper that I have. I got tons of that carbon fiber paper that I've been using to reinforce landing gear buckets and firewalls. And it'll go great for putting into here and reinforcing this cow. Then um, I'm going to take some carbon fiber rods and run it through the fuselage. I see some good spot. I mean, this is a big, this is a big freaking fuselage. Let me show you. You got a lot of room in this thing to do anything, almost like a P-47, which I was going to go for the P-47 Thunderbolt, but they were out. <laughs> Folks like those. So I went for the Hellcat. And you got room to put a larger battery. I mean, you got all kinds of room in this thing, you know, to put just about anything you want in here. Now, one thing I was looking at is that tail is pretty hollow. Those carbon fiber rods, I'm going to run them through the tail so that it reinforces them in a and I was thinking like doing like uh, uh, in the tube deep. He had a uh, F-22 Raptor and it had some caverns in it and he used foam. He took foam, shot it in and filled up those caverns. You know, make it more rigid. I'm thinking about doing that too. Just to make this thing more crash proof. And uh, don't worry about weight because honestly one thing Steve at Killer Planes is right about, heavier planes do fly better. Now all the crashes I've done have been the planes, uh, have been my foamies. All my light foamies, I've crashed them, put them back together, crashed them again. All my nitro planes, those, my nitro planes weigh anywhere from 10 to 13 pounds. But they've never crashed. Now I crashed my, I, I crash landed my T-28 belly to in, no damage, just a crunched cow, easy repair. In fact, I even crashed my J3 Cub a few, a couple of times. Minor repair, you know, but those things fly great, and especially when you have a wind, because at my field, we live our, my field on the Grafton, uh, the, not the Grafton, Grafton is our, nit is our uh, nitro field out in Grafton, Ohio. That's where we have to go, that's 40 miles from where I live. And we have to go out there to fly our planes. But the Warner Field, which is only 10 minutes from my job, that's the electric, which is off of Canal Road, that's the electric field where we fly our electric planes. So on Fridays, I have my a plane in the back of my truck. And I, uh, after I finish work, I go straight up to the airfield and fly. It's nothing but for nothing but electric planes. So it's real nice. Don't have to call no big tool, no big uh, flight box or anything. Just a couple batteries, you know, and go do some little flying. But this Hellcat is sweet. I like it. Now, like I said, I'm going to do some, I'm going to crash proof all the uh, fuselage, bulletproof the nose. In fact, look on killerplanes.com where he shows how to do craft, crash proofing. It's real easy. You know, pretty much the stuff I had uh, for to do it is here. I just have to get myself uh, the long drill bits and carbon fiber rods. So hopefully next weekend I pay a visit out to uh, U.S. Hobbies and Minner, get some carbon fiber rods from there. So, but other than that, this thing is nice. I like it. It'll be a fun project. I've always wanted a Hellcat. And there's not too many Hellcat kits on the market, too. Uh, back in my younger days, I was trying to come up with a way of scratch building a Hellcat, especially since I was into scratch building. Uh, I had a couple of two-liter pop bottle bottoms, and I was trying to form them up as the cow. And that's about as far as I got. You know? <laughs> Let's see, what happened? I think I got married. That's what made me stop. <laughs> so anyway... That's what we're going to do with like this is a real nice kit. 
I was hoping to get a couple of extra propellers, but they were out of stock. Propellers were out of stock. So, and here's that receiver I got. Oh, Jasmine, you put that receiver for something else. Here's this receiver that I got earlier this year. But the plane came with two propellers. So I'm like, okay, I got my spare. So no big deal. Now, cockpit. Steve at Killer Plane shows how you can put a camera in the cockpit. I don't know if I'm going to go that route. I might just rig it so I can go both ways. I can pull the bottom out, put the camera in there, or if I didn't want to take pictures, I'll take the camera out and put the pilot back in there. I mean, they give you just about everything. They give you glue to glue the pilot down. They give you glue to glue the plane together. They even give you Y harnesses for the landing gears and the ailerons. I'm like, wow, <laughs> what a deal. Now I'm gonna repaint the pilot. He does not look like a Navy pilot. Navy pilot. He looks more like a, an Army pilot. So I'm gonna change the. Plus, he's got. I like to paint my planes my pilots to look like me. And this guy doesn't look like anything like me. You know, he, so I'm gonna change that up. And see, see now look, let me show you something. The cockpit here, or the, the canopy, is the dark blue that I like. That's the dark blue that I like. Compare it to the blue of the rest of the plane. See that shade, it's a shade darker. Now that's the blue that I was going for. That's the navy blue that I like. So I'm going to change it to that. But this is going to be a fun plane. I'll tell you right now, honestly, if I didn't go with all these changes and modifications, I could have this thing up and running, ready for flying in two hours. It's just that simple. But you know me. Anybody who knows me knows I don't do simple. i got to be technical. And I'm also going to put my own, I'm going to put my own decals on. Uh, I got some way of mo modifying these decals a little bit. I'm going to put some nose art on it. And like one thing that I always do is put my own name on the airplane. <laughs> I put pilot Patrick B. Alexander. So I, I, I personalize my stuff. That way I hopefully have a less chance of crashing it. So, <laughs> so this is going to be a fun project. So in the meantime, I'm getting everything else done. I'm working on the back wing. That's coming along nicely. I think I'm just going to get, get another battery uh, for this. Even though the back, even though this 2200 out of the back, out of the back wing works fine, I just I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and get it, get a little, cause you, uh, a little stronger battery, maybe a 2800 or a 3000, just to up the power to compensate a little bit for the weight. Uh, so, but other than that, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. But uh, the main thing, figuring out solving the problem of these landing gears. Because like I said, I heard a lot about these gears. The whole plane, everything all about this plane is great, but the main problem people can have are these landing gears. And I think I may, might see the problem. It turned out to be more simple than what I thought. Maybe that's why people have been missing it, because it's just that simple. But, but we're going to find out. So. All right, folks, like I said, next weekend, I'm going to go and get what I need. And I'm going to start work on this thing because it's actually a quick, a super quick build. But with my modifications, it's going to take a little longer. So, but in the meantime, you guys have a great day and uh, good flying to you.